<laughs> what what is going on though? Because the, uh, apart from the sex parties, which neither of us can talk about, she's obviously got a book to publicise. Indeed, she's obviously very pro Boris. Indeed, uh, and yet she has now come up with a novel that is going to lift the veil on power out of sight of voters, a mm. cabal of individuals, the Dominic Cummings, who mm. was very much in sight of voters for all the wrong reasons, um, Dougie Smith, someone people have generally not heard of, and saying that they plotted to bring down um, Boris Johnson and actually had a hand in the demise of previous people, all marshalled under General Gove. How much credibility is there to this, all, do you think? It all sounds very exciting. The fact that you called it a novel, uh, which I think may have been a slight slip on your part, but a very revealing slip nonetheless, uh, it, it tells you perhaps how we should treat this book. Uh, look, it's all rather fanciful, I think. Um, look, is it true that if you gather more than four political people in a room, they start plotting? Yes. Uh, that's just the nature of Westminster. Um, sh so some of the claims are a little bit fanciful. I, I will, however, say one thing. That, that I think probably she has hit upon that's right, which is that when Boris became Prime Minister, he made one big and fateful decision, which was to put Dominic Cummings in charge of his political team. Uh, and in doing so, he empowered an individual, whatever you think about him, who fundamentally was not loyal to him. Uh, and who was, in fact, had his own agenda. And, and was a go fa find well, in the first had, place. Well, and just had his own agenda. He, yeah. he, he, now, when you're Prime Minister, you have a massive target on your back. Everyone wants to take you down. So the one thing you need to do to survive is to have a small group of people who are fundamentally loyal to you to protect you. They call it the Praetorian Guard from Roman times. He didn't put that in place. He put in place someone who wasn't loyal to him. And therefore, the people who were meant to be working for him were, weren't really working for but him. But you see, there's elements that you see. I'm less sceptical about some of the claims in uh, Nadine's book because there are things I recognise as a relatively insignificant backbencher. Um, the pulling of strings on selection of candidates, it was centralised. I think it was centralised under the then chairman of Boris Johnson, the chap called Ben Elliott, mm. and this chap, Dougie Smith, that she identifies. He was basically approving she said, um, she alleged, alleged. Uh, the candidates, and yet I know, as a potential candidate back in those days, that didn't get a look in. I could name, uh, I could give you a long list of people, many mm. of who'd been MPs, who were clearly eligible to be at least interviewed, not approved, sent away. They had total control over the list. And that was allowing them to shape the government in their name. Not in Boris Johnson's name, but in the name of well, maybe indeed. And others. The, so I'll come back to this point. If the people who have that power are loyal to the Prime Minister of the day, then that's, that's obviously a far more consistent scenario. Like, it's always been the case that successive operations around Prime Ministers have sought to control the candidates list. Um, that is just, the, I would argue, the normal exercise of power in a political party. Now, you could make an argument to say that our whole system of how we choose MPs in the first place is pretty rotten, and I think there's a fair argument about that. Um, well, because I'm not so sure. I, I mean, some of them are all right, Nick. Some of them are all right. <laughs> um, but do you know what I mean? It's like we have a system that is basically a bit of a closed shop for people to become MPs for both major parties, and we 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 then okay. we then worry about the quality of our parliament. Her central point is that a cabal of these individuals brought down Boris Johnson. Did Boris Johnson bring himself down, and these people just helped him along the way, yeah. or was it the other way around, as Nadine suggests? Boris opened the door, and they walked through it. Okay, let's uh, let's go to. Um, I think a former Tory member, Jenny in High Wycombe. Jenny, hello. Yes, hello there, Nick. So she's still a current Tory. Oh, member. you are a current. Uh, I'm sorry. Good yeah. to hear, good. Uh, good okay, to know, yeah, I suppose. <laughs> I mean, I'm a paying member of the Conservative Party. Right. You know, they don't get extra. That's that's the, the two of us then. <laughs> <laughs> they get the membership fee. Let's say that for me and, and my husband as well. Um, now the thing is, it's dangerous to vote reform. I mean, much as I'm very grateful to Nigel Farage for being the instigator of uh, David Cameron doing something which he is regretting until this day because he was such a Remainer yep. and wanted to stay in the EU. And I, believe me, I'm not anti-Europe. I mean, I speak fluent French. I have lived and worked in France and in the city of London in the French Bank. I'm yep. not anti-EU at all, but uh, anti-Europe, anti but I'm certainly anti-EU, no question about it. And there's one thing the EU wants from us more than anything else, and what do you think that is? Money. 
correct. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. To be able to come over here whenever they like with all their, uh, you know, Islamic terrorists and all the rest of it. You know, we, we are really in danger if we if we um, get too close to them because you just don't know who will come to And it. how do you feel about the fact that, you know, it's odds on there's going to be a Labour government reform are nipping away they got a 7.2 yeah, percent yeah. popularity yeah, yeah. rating at the moment but I, say, but I say you're handing this to labor if you vote to reform and i'm certainly not anti reform believe me i'm a right you know uh brexit here no question about it i voted to, to get out mm. but you are handing it to um to, to, to labor so so for reform. you despite i don't know how you feel I, you may not feel very kindly disposed to the government? You may think they've made lots of mistakes. No, they're rubbish. I tell you what, soon that, I mean, nice chap though he is, competent though he is, he should have stayed in his job, definitely. Because Boris, whatever you think of him, and, you know, they, they brought yep. him down, they were just bringing everybody down, in my opinion, and they, they managed to bring down Boris. I'm disgusted at that. We did not have a say in that. I mean, uh, they put all these blooming prime ministers in, Liz Truss and co., you know, I, I, you know why I voted for, for Liz Trust to keep the others out. Yeah, <laughs> yep. I do know. Well, you weren't supposed to do that. You were supposed to to vote for Sunak. And Jenny, a lot of a lot of people would be listening to you and thinking, well, after she said that, there's no way she's going to vote Conservative. But am I right in thinking you will? Yes, I am going definitely to vote Conservative because I do not want a Labour government. OK, I listen, Labour. Jenny, I think that was a great call. I don't think you could have summarised how many people are feeling better. So thank you so much for that. Good to hear from you. Um, Alex, just before I come to you, Leah in East Yorkshire. Leah, hello. Hello. Hi. What would you like to talk about? Well, I, for one, will be voting reform. Right. Um, I believe that the two-party system is broken. I believe that the country is broken. Um, and I believe it's time for a change. Now, you're saying that if we vote reform, it's basically a wasted vote because it will bring in a Labour government. Well, only based well, on the opinion it, polls, Leah. That's what yeah, I'm well, saying. Well, if, if it brings in a Labour government, so be it. They will live to rue it. Um, you know, we've got flip flop Starmer. We've got Richie Sumat, who was not elected and then stabbed Morris, uh, Boris in the back. There, there's no politicians at the moment in the two-party system that have any integrity whatsoever. And that, and that, I think, you summed up, just as Jenny summed up the case, why there are some Conservatives who will hold their nose and vote Conservative at the next election. There are others like you who say, be damned the consequences, it's time to change. I mean, do you... Do, do you th this is a really a difficult question for you to answer, but so many people... Uh, I have met who have walked to the polling booth on the day and they have said, I am not voting Conservative, I'm not voting Conservative, and they go in and then they think of the prospect of, in their case, it may be that they can't bear the idea of a Labour government or the reality that however passionate their support for reform, they know by the polls they're not going to win. They will change their mind as the last minute. Would that be you? Well, no, I would ask them to look at the last... 15, what, 15 years of Tory rule, I would ask them to look at that and honestly vote for a party that has some integrity. Well, I think um, you're clinging to your integrity and I have huge respect to you for that. Leah, thanks for kicking the conversation up. Alex and I are going to pick up on that subject now. You can join the conversation on this. Do you think you will vote for reform even if it means a Labour government or do you think it is a such a threat that you will stick with the Tories, or maybe you're a Labour voter and you want to encourage, actually, more Conservatives to vote for reform because it'll help get Labour into power.